and other <laughs> fabulous, fun, and funny government regulations and laws. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Your bosses have all told me that if you don't participate, I can keep you for an additional three hours. So <laughs> keep that in mind. OK, I'm going to actually piggyback on what Karen was speaking about a few minutes ago. And I'm going to ask for your participation. If I happen to snap my fingers, or I say, what is your brain going to tell, you, tell yourself? What are you going to tell yourself? Uh, or if I say three Ps, I want you to go three Ps, three Ps. Go ahead and snap and say out loud three Ps, three, three Ps. Ps. OK, so participate with me. And I'm going to, in a way, piggyback off what Karen was talking about a minute ago. Three, three hours. You want to be here 15 hours? Three Ps. OK, all right. What, in your mind, differentiates the rock star manager from the pedestrian? Or even worse, the loser, the pr pretender, the poser. One word. Action. And, well, Accountability. I'm sorry. Accountability. Accountability. I'm going to go with one word that actually entails many things. It's leadership. Leadership. I had the great fortune. My first job out of business school, I worked for GE Capital in Southern California. I'm not from Southern California. I live there now. But I worked for GE Capital in Southern California. This was at a time when Jack Welch, who was heralded as being the greatest CEO ever, was CEO of GE Corporation, the Fortune 1 company in the world. The vision, the passion, the buy-in that that man created amongst 330,000 employees was brilliant, was incredible. I've also worked for some of the worst managers at a lower level, level and at the CEO level. Who You learn a lot from both. You learn a lot from the brilliant ones. You learn an awful lot from the disasters, the train wrecks. You really do. And I've had the pleasure of managing many managers myself. What differentiates the rock stars from the pedestrians is leadership. Now, that entails many things, right? Leadership. One thing we'll talk about now and others we'll talk about later is emotional intelligence, which Karen mentioned a moment ago. Emotional intelligence. Let's define that as an individual's ability to recognize in themselves and in others emotions or emotional states and then to actively manage them so that they facilitate optimal rapport, communication, understanding, development, all sorts of positive outcomes while you also mitigate or eliminate negative outcomes. Okay? So emotional intelligence. So how do we then take on new knowledge, new skills? Karen talked about it a moment ago. Come up with a mnemonic device. This is a brilliant, simple thing. You start to retrain your mind. You say three Ps, or like Karen. Three Ps. Thank you. All right. Or three Cs, like Karen was saying a minute ago. She was talking about three Cs. So what I'm going to suggest, I'm going to do a role play here in a moment with one of you. I'm going to get somebody who's very outgoing. And I want you to evaluate me during the role play, then I'm going to have you guys role play with each other. And while you watch me and evaluate me, I want you to be constantly thinking about these three Ps, which I'll explain in a moment. Then when you role play, I want you to do it within the structure of evaluating yourself with the three Ps, the three Ps, the three Ps. And in the future, whenever you communicate with someone, I want you, if you get up, go out of your office, bump into somebody in the hallway, pick up your phone to talk, you're in a meeting and you're speaking with someone, always be saying three Ps. Three Ps, three Ps, or in the situations Karen talked about, three Cs, three Cs. Have that go through your mind. That's how you retrain your mind. That's how you take in new knowledge, you develop new skills and new habits, and you become a better, more successful person, and you get more of that dream you're after in your life. All right, so three Ps, what does that mean? Thank you, that's good. Um, you can go early. Um, th three Ps. The first P is presence. Presence. The second P, perspective. And the third P is positive outcome or positive action. Positive outcome or positive action. So whenever you're going to communicate with someone to facilitate emotional intelligence, to facilitate rapport, communication, understanding, leadership, development, say three Ps, peak performers in every walk of life, surgeons, artists, athletes, accountants, you name it, peak performers, the best of the best. When they're performing at peak level, they are 100% present in the moment. They're not worried about what happened five minutes ago. That's history. It's irrelevant. They don't care about five minutes from now. Peak performers are always 100% present in the moment. 
If they're not 100% present, they're not peak performing. This is, holds true for your communication and your leadership. If you're not 100% present with the person you're communicating with, you may be good. I'm not going to take that away from you, but you're not at your peak game. The second P, perspective. Whenever we communicate, we assume our perspective. It's our perspective. It's truth. It's empirical fact, right? Mm, not so much. In fact, perspective is just that. It's perspective. My perspective is different based on my mentality, my historical experience, my proclivities, my biases, you name it. So the second P is perspective. Ask yourself, what is my perspective? Don't just assume it. Become consciously aware of what your perspective is. If you're not consciously aware of it, you can't manage it. And then go to the next step. Ask yourself, what is this person's perspective? Their perspective may be here. Yours may be here. You're miles apart. It doesn't mean you're going to get here, but you want to understand what is my perspective, because it is just my perspective. And how can I manage that to facilitate communication, rapport, understanding, development? What is this person's perspective? So the three Ps. Three Ps. Thank you. Three Ps. Presence, perspective, and then positive outcome or positive action. You want to take positive action to create a positive outcome. Don't just sit back and do the first P and be present and be a wiser person and take the next step, perspective, and understand your perspectives. Again, you're a, pos uh, a wiser person. You want to create a positive outcome through positive action. That is how you can retrain your brain, three Ps. Three Ps. You can retrain your brain to become a better leader, to be more successful, to get that dream that you're after.